Someone on YouTube asked for another video tour, studio tour, so here goes. Warts and all, I did not prepare this at all. It's just how it looks normally. And this is what's going on. I've been doing more pour tests. I have worked a lot for many years with the Liquitex pouring medium and um, Golden now has pouring medium. So I'm doing a bunch of tests with that. They have a pouring medium gloss and a pouring medium matte. And so I've been mixing different ratios of those. This is one, I'm trying to get some kind of like satiny thing. This was like maybe a six to one ratio of matte to gloss and it came out really glossy. This is half and half and it's still fairly transparent. So that might be good for what I'm going for on some panels I'm working on. And then these guys, I am, uh, I'm not sure if you can see this, maybe if I hold it up to the light. So, you know, I do a lot of layers of pouring and then I float marks and shapes on top. And so I did this shape and now I'm pouring more um, so that I can pour, uh, paint another shape on top and have it be significantly elevated off of the pink shape. And then this is, I don't know if you guys are familiar with the painting, The Rose by Jay DeFeo. So this is my, um, I jokingly call this my rose because that painting ended up weighing two tons because she painted on it over seven years with oil paint and she kept adding and adding and adding to it. And um, I think it's now in the collection of the Whitney Museum of American Art. And um, anyway, it was a very heavy painting because she kept building it up. So. This is just this diminutive little painting, but I'm building up many, many layers. And um, yeah, maybe you can see, wow. Light is tricky um, because we've got those windows there, but I wanna get, and it's also stuck on there because I was doing pouring and then it sticks. Okay, so let's see if I can get you close up in there and get some light from the side without getting the window reflection. Oh my lord, now I got the lights. Anyway, can you see that? Those marks are floating off. There's many, many layers of clear in between each row. No idea if this is showing up. Let me know in the comments if you can see what I was trying to show you. If you were here in person, you would see it. Um, this is just a panel where I'm still in the sub layers, so I'm painting layers of green on the ground. And this I was having fun with. So this is a small series I've been working on. And um, I was having fun. You may have seen my Instagram post if you follow me there. If you don't, the link is in the description box. I would love to connect with you there. I get a lot of nice messages from people and I think a lot of you guys are coming from my YouTube. But I just did this laying this sh translucent shape on top made by the matte pouring medium. This is my tests that I do and you may have seen my video. If you haven't, I will link it here about um, pouring tests. So how I test my materials and learn more about them. This guy's in progress and um, it's going to be sanded on the side and then I can't even remember now. I have too many things going. Honestly, too many things going here. You guys have seen these. <laughs> These little friends, they hang out together way up there because there's not a lot of storage in my studio and you've seen these before in my previous. If you haven't, you can watch my studio tour video from July, I think these were in here. This is a newer piece. I painted it on two separate, well, it, I cut up to, a, I'm trying to say that I had two paintings, a green painting and a blue painting on paper and I cut them and collage them together and then did these marks on it. And shoom, there's my computer, my desk, all my books. Not all my books, I have a lot of my art books at home. My scanner, my printer, and found furniture. Love it, I needed some, I'm really particular. I want everything in here to be white, so only the, um, paintings and the color that and the forms that I choose stand out. So this one I showed you yesterday. I did for the first time, what do you call that? 
like a little post for subscribers where you, it just like story, like an Instagram story. And I did that yesterday and boom, I went in and painted on this and I'm just sitting and contemplating this morning what is next. It might have to stand it up in order to figure out what's going on. Um, then these uh, just came back from another show. They were in, these were in the other. So they've been in a couple of shows since the summer. You can learn more about these on my video that I did in July. These just came back from a show here in Emeryville, California, they have an annual juried show, and the jurors selected these two paintings. Doing more of these watercolor on paper, on this Indian, handmade Indian paper that has this deckle edge. If you don't know what a deckle edge is, it's when you make paper and you lay it um, on the screen, there's a rough edge, and you can trim that off, but some people like it, and I'm just working with that deck of ledge. Um, so yeah, these are some more of these paintings I've been working on. And then these two, I've got a note to myself, blue tape and do the back. Actually, that's to my studio assistant who's coming tomorrow to help. <laughs> um, so I, I'm really enjoying these. They're not quite done, but here they are. There's another, like, there's four of them. Where's this? The other one must be hiding out somewhere. I think it's over here under, that's my little pouring area there. Sorry it's so sloppy, but hey, this is my life. This is my real unedited life. So, and then this one, You Are My Heaven. That was the title of my exhibition this summer at the Fourth Wall Gallery in Oakland, California. And this um, this piece figured prominently in that. And I did a t artist talk there. If you guys would like to hear that artist talk, let me know in the comments because I can post that. The colors are way warmer than this. They're coming out really cool, but they're actually orange, yellow, sort of sunsetty colors. I think it's more like that. It's so interesting how the iPhone shifts color as you get closer. Must be trying to bounce light. This guy, this green one, someone on Instagram or somewhere said they were really interested in this painting. I think I'm gonna have to turn this to the wall because literally I get so distracted by too many things going on and I feel like I have to take care of everything now. And I need to focus, focus, focus. This guy needs to be my focus because it's um, a little daunting and I need to not um, have a distraction to step away when I really could be um, using my creative energy to solve whatever problems this painting brings up. And then these are prints from my residency this summer. I don't know if I've shared these. No, wait, maybe. I don't remember. Anyway, my studio assistant made this little grouping and you can see the interference powder on there maybe. Whoops, I was just trying to focus and then it didn't. I don't know if you can see that, but um, these are letterpress on watercolor. And you can also see all these on my website. And you can see them really blurry here because the camera's not knowing where to focus for some reason. This table tends to be where I do uh, works on paper. I've been having so much fun with the color aid paper. I really wanted to try and um, change up my color game a little bit. And so I pulled out the color aid paper and it's not organized in any way that made sense to me. So I organized it in little chromatic piles. So there's different neutral tones and purples and blues and they're just really fun. It was not cheap, $25.20. And I bought that like 15 years ago. Um, if you're interested in um, studying color, Joseph Albers book has a lot of exercise using this color aid paper that's really Oh, those exercises. Just look at the book. It'll blow your mind. You will learn so much about color 
just from reading that book. Um, brilliant. Anyway, so I was doing that, plus I had this book over here that um, was recommended by my lady um, Amanda Halle, who has a channel called The Ultimate Fashion History. Sorry. Got a bunch of other books. Hilma F. Clint. Who saw that show at the Guggenheim in New York? That was wonderful. This is David Ireland, local San Francisco Bay artist. artist. No longer with us in physical form, but with us as his art and his home in the mission. Anyway, this is the color book I wanted to tell you about. She's doing these amazing videos about... Um, uh, what does she call it? Fashion history in color. I'm probably getting that wrong, but they're great. I will link one below, but she recommended this book in her very first one. She did one on the thirties and it takes you through decades. Um, this is, oh my God, so funny. My childhood avocado and harvest gold. Those were the colors of the seventies. There was a lot of appliances in these colors, kitchens in these colors. Anyway, but um, yeah, so it takes you through all these different eras and the palettes of the various eras. And it's inspiring, um, again, because I was just trying to get out of some of my color habits and um, try some new combinations. So that's a cool book. I don't even think it's in print anymore. I think I had to buy it secondhand. The reason I'm showing you this stack, though, whoa, ah! books falling okay um, it's because I'm actually using them to weigh down and flatten drawings so this is another one from this series I'm gonna be putting more on that and then um, Richard Tuttle also an artist whose show at the SF MoMA some years ago just inspired me so deeply his brain works in very unique and original ways. If you ever get to hear him speak, it's kind of a hoot because he he really is, uh, he thinks and speaks and expresses himself so differently. What did he say? Something like, paintings are like clouds. I love that quote and I don't even know what he meant by it, but I liked it. It's more, maybe he speaks like a poet. Ah, anyway, heavy books. I have more under here. So there's one I was working on yesterday, which I wanted to show you. Yeah, this one. So I'm in the process with this one. Hope to finish this in the next couple of weeks. Um, I can only do a few rows at a time because it's too easy to smear them. So it's kind of slow going, but this is that same watercolor paper with interference color on it. And then, and actually some of these colors were inspired by a palette from that loosely loosely not anyway that was a palette inspired by that book okay everyone thank you so much for watching that I hope you found it interesting I also hope you found it inspiring because I really want this channel to be about you and supporting you in your creative practice as well okay have a great day bye